Oh, you're on the screen, the computer now. Hi, Bernie. Hi, Bernie. Hello, Hebra. How are you? Oops. We can't hear you. You don't hear me? Can you? I can't hear. Oh, there you go. One second. Can you no. hear me now? Yeah, now we are on Masech. We are on Shmuel Aleph, uh, Perek Yud Aleph. Um, last week, the last pasuk, just to remind ourselves, uh, Shaul. Where are, you, where, where are we again, Ernie? Where are we? Shmuel Aleph. Yes. Perak Yud Aleph. Okay. Pasuk Aleph. Yeah. So Shaul has been anointed king, but we saw that he wasn't received very well, and he went back to his home. Some people went with Shmuel. Excuse me. Some people went with Shaul, and the Bnei Blial, they were the Abel Aretz. They made fun of him. Who, who is this guy that's going to save us? And we saw last week that he was humble, and he didn't say anything against the Bnei Blial. Even though a Melech, a king, has the right, if uh, someone is being Moirid B'Malchus, can even kill them, but he was quiet. And we talked about he's praised. On one hand, he's praised for his tzniyus, but on the other hand, we learned that a melech that is moichel on his covid, you should not be moichel on his covid, and that was one of the reasons for his downfall. So we're going to see a little bit more of that in this week's parak. Vayal nachash ha'amoni. Nachash was the king of Ammon, which is a neighboring country. Ammon and Moab were on the other side of the Jordan, on the east side of the Jordan, in the southern regions, uh, opposite Le'yam Melach and even further south. So Nachash Ammoni goes up, Vayichan al Yavesh Gilad. Yavesh Gilad is a town on the east side of the Jordan, it was on Aver Ayarding. Uh, they were involved in the Pilegesh Bagiva uh, civil war against Binyamin. Eventually, the Binyamites who remained married the daughters of the Yavesh Gilad people. And we'll see that may be why Nachash decided to attack that city. Why? All the, remember, Shaul is from Shevet Binyamin. So Nachash Amon is going to want to embarrass Shaul. So by attacking Yavesh Gilad, where his family, the Mechutonim, etc., are there. Vayomru Kolanshe Yavesh El Nachash. They're surrounded by the Ammonites. So the population of Yavesh Gilad say to the Nachash, Karas lanu bris v'nabdecha. Let's, we're going to surrender to you. Let's make a covenant and we will serve you. The Malbim says, Kefi anira hiskane Nachash al shimlichu Yisrael melech. Why? Why all of a sudden is Nachash showing up? Well, the, the neighboring countries all of, all of a sudden hear that the Jews have a new king. They haven't had a king before. So it, it rises up the jealousy among the neighboring kings. Oh, they think he has a king? Let's challenge the king. And the Malbim says, Lachain Allah Lanshei Avesh Kilad, Kibne bin Yamin Lakuna Shehem. After the mice of the Pilegesh Begiva, the people of the Avish Gilad, the Binyamites had married the girls there. 
Umistomis Yashu Shama Binyamin. Binyamites probably settled there. And therefore, he wanted to embarrass and humiliate, humiliate Shaul, who he knew there was probably a family in Mechutonim there. And the Sechta Yuma, Dav Chav Beis, on the Pasuk, Bayal Nachash Amoni, Omer Rav, Mibnei Ma Nena Shaul. Why was Shaul punished? Eventually, that the kingdom was taken from him. Mibnei Shemochal Al Kvodo. He didn't stand on the covet of the king. Chenemar, Uvnei Bliyal Amru, in the Pasuk Chavzai, in the Pasuk right before Pasuk Aleph, Mayo Shienu Zeba Yivizu, Velo Yivilo Mincha, they didn't bring him a gift, and he was silent. Immediately, Vayal Nachash Amoni Vayichan Yavish Kilad. Recording in progress. Now, I want to analyze this a little bit more. Those B'nai Brial said, Shashol ain't a roi limochaleinu. And eventually in this parak, the supporters of Shoal are going to say to him, Tnu etan ashim v'nimitemhu. Let's kill out these people who went against you, let's kill them. And Shaul declined to kill them. According to that shot that we just read from the Gemara, Shaul was taken to task for not killing out those men. On the other hand, it's hard to say that Shaul sinned. He should be praised that he didn't want to disturb the Kedush of the Yom that HaKadosh Baruch Hu made a victory for Klai Yisrael by killing people. And you're supposed to turn, and in some ways you're supposed to act in that kind of fashion. So the Musar Nevi'im says, Nira Lomar, Shechet Acher Shal Shaul Nimsa Beparsha Zu. Later on in this week's part, in, in this parak, we're going to see Shaul comes from the farms where he's been dealing with cows. So we're going to see Shaya Oseik Ba'avodata Sadeh, the Lob Ba'avodata Malucha. What kind of king goes and works in the field? So the Radak explains, well, he went back home because the Anshay Bilial had said, well, we don't want this guy's king. So Shaul saw that he's not being received properly. And therefore, he's going to go back to his home and, and work on his private businesses. That was a Chet Gadol by Chazal, that he, he left the Malucha, even though Shmuel HaMelech nimshach him with oil. And that's one another reason why the kingdom was taken away from him. He he acted too timidly in that respect. Posuk Beis. So how does Nachash Amoni respond to the people of Yavesh Gilad? I will do a bris with you on one condition. I'm going to cut out your right eye of all the inhabitants. And this will be a big embarrassment for Klai Yisrael that they've subjugated and they've given up their eye. Now, Chazal, the Yalkut Shimoni particularly, learns Pshat that he wasn't physically talking about removing their eye. The Yalkut says, Rav Levi Omar, 
Elu Akloim Vakashim Shav Yisrael Shem Machmad Eneim Shav Yisrael. These were the archers and the spear carriers of the armies of Israel that he was going to take to his own army. Now, just like so the archers were considered like the apple of the eye for Israel. So that's the language that he was that would have been what he meant by saying, I'm going to take the eye. Rav Simon Omar, Elu Sanhedrol Shal Yisrael, Shein Gagali Neim Shal Yisrael. It means he was going to sort of destroy the Sanhedrin. He was going to weaken the judges because they are the eyes of Klai Yisrael. Third One of the psukim in Devarim, it's in Kiseitse, is Lo Yavo Aboni Umoavi Bikalashem. Gam Dora Siri Lo Yavo Bikalashem that male members of the, of the nation of Ammon or Moab cannot intermarry with Kla Yisrael. So this bothered, even if they become Geirim, I mean, you can accept Geirim from all other nations. From Mitzrim, you have to wait three generations. And from Ammon or Moab, you can never accept converts from them. So he wanted the Yavesh Gilad people to bring them a safe, bring him a safer Torah, and he would cut out that pasuk. So the Musar Anavim explains, We understand why when he took the archers because we said they're the apple of the eye and we said that when he takes the Sanhedrin because the Torah calls them the Eneha Eda but why is cutting out a pasuk from the Torah why is that referred to as Ayin Yemini Nira Loimar Shezeu Mipnei Shebazar Azot Yesh Ikar Gadol Torah Yisrael the warning not to marry Amon is a very big foundation in the Torah. In When you meet somebody and you want to know, does he have really Jewish characteristics? Rachmanim, Baishanim, Goim Lechasadi. They have mercy on people. They have a lot of shame, meaning they're, they're, they're modest. They, they embarrass easily. The Goim Lechasadi. And they, they give chesed to people. That's in their natural DNA. We get that from Avram Avinu, we get them from Asari Menu. So you see somebody with the opposite. Midot, you know that they're not part of Klai Yisrael. Kol sheyesh bo shlosha simanim alalu raui lidabek bu umazu. And then if you find other nations of the world, non-Jews, but who have these characteristics, so you can accept gerim for them. But amanu moav shechatu bezeh shelo kidmu et me Yisrael belechem uvamayim. When the Jewish people at the end of 38, 39 years were traveling, the Torah recounts in Parshas Chukas that as the Jewish people approached the borders of Amun Moab, they did not uh, come out and give them food and drink. Now, if you asked many, if we analyzed certain fundamental principles that are shown over and over and again in the Torah. One of them is Hakaras HaTov. Hakaras HaTov. Many examples, Moshe Rabbeinu. 
was saved by the Nile, right? He was put into the Nile, saved his life. So when it came down, time to strike the Nile, to turn the Nile into blood, Moshe was, could not strike the Nile. Iron struck the Nile because it would be lack of a Korosatov on the, on, the, on the part of Moshe to strike the Nile. Last week's Parsha, Parsha's Pinchas, they're told to do battle with Midian. Who is chosen to be the general? Pinchas, not Moshe. Why not Moshe? Well, Moshe owed Hakor Satov to Midian, right? That's where he ran away from Egypt to Yitro, who was Kohen Midian. And over and over and over and over again. Now, who was the father of Ammon and Moab? It was Lot. Lot. Yep. Lot. Well, who saved Lot? Avram Avinu, right? So the basic Hakkara Satov should have been inculcated in Ammon and Moab so when Klai Yisrael came through, they should have been welcomed with food and drink, but they were not. So it's, it's not just that they were not going like Hasodim. They didn't even have this understanding of Akkor Satov. They were also involved in getting Bilam to curse them. The Jewish people were warned not to marry them. So we should not be inculcated with their bad midot. As we've mentioned many times in this year together, Susie and I met when we were when we would go to Rabbonin to get advice about shiduchim for our children, they always said, look for, for good midot. Look for good midot. And you can see here, the concept of zivug, where the next generations are going to be created, you want to make sure that midos tovos continue to be inculcated in Klai Yisrael. So that's why Nachash compared it to the right eye, Lomar. A person's eyes are the most important thing to a human being. A blind person, Chazal says, is like a mace. So that's how he explains why they compare it to the right eye. Can you have an interesting uh, point that I'm seeing in the Mayam Loez? Yes. Why was Nachash chosen to threaten the Jews that he would take out their right eyes and if he wanted them to make a treaty with him? Just like you're referring to Sefer Gracious, the same thing is you think, go back to Nachash, the time of Gan Eden. What was the Nachash? The symbol of, of evil being done. They convinced uh, Chava to eat from the pre Adas. So he symbolizes uh, using speech for evil. Therefore, God chose Nachash as the medium for his intervention at this point as a rebuke for the evil spoken by Shoal's critics. Mm, for the B'nai B'lial. Okay, very good. That's the Me'am Loez. Okay. Pasuk Gimel. Vayamu elav ziknei yavesh. So the elders of Yavesh responded, give us seven days. We will send messengers to all the borders of Israel. If no one's going to save us, then we will go out and accept uh, surrender to you. Now, why didn't they say, why didn't we say we're going to send for a show? So one opinion is that B'nai B'lial were living in Yavesh Kiyal. These were the people who, who had no trust in show. Or they understood by sending out messengers to all of Yisrael, this would mobilize show. 
And why did Nachash agree to this? Well, he wanted to fight all of Kleiser. He didn't think that the king would gather a lot of people. And he thought it would be further embarrassing and humiliating to Klai Yisrael. Pasuk Dalet. Vayavoa malachim givat Shaul. So they came to where Shaul's house was, givat Shaul. Vayadabruat varim boznei ha'am. And they gave word what Nachash had said. People started crying. So first of all, where is Givat Shaul? So many Meforshim say it's the same Giva that was Pilegesh Begiva. And Shaul decided to set up his base in the very city that caused all the strife. This became the capital for Shaul. He planted himself in the, in the exact place which led to such pirud in Kla Yisrael because he wanted to point out to them that kingship in Israel will not succeed unless we have unity. The division that came from this place, we should abolish it. We have to forget it completely that there was a civil war against Binyamin. That's the Das Soifrim. The Das Soifrim gives that shot. Shaul went home to do his business. And as we say, some say he went home because he didn't think he was accept, accepted by the nation to be the king. They didn't treat him with covet of the malucha. Other people say, no, he didn't come. He came on a horse, they're covered, but he came. So there's a machlokas. And as, as we said, some hold that this was viewed negatively against Shaul if he really went back and, and didn't pay attention to the fact that he was Nimlach, Nimshach as a king by Shmuel. Why are the people crying? So they told Shaul what's going on in Yavesh Kilan. Vatitzlach Ruach Elohim al Shaul. The spirit of God came on to him. The Radak says it's Ruach Kavura, like courage. The Abarbanel says Ruach HaKodesh. And that's the Madrega Rishoina of Navua. So you start with Ruach HaKodesh. Kishomo said, Elevaychara Pomiod. He actually got angry. Now, Chazal tell us it's not good to get angry. Person gets angry, it's like the parts of Gehenim are ruling over him. However, and he's Rabbi Yonah brings this mice of Shoal that the anger that he showed was able to rally Klai Yisrael. So, so in general, and, and for example, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, that when he broke the Luchos, he got angry with Shem Shamayim and HaKadosh Baruch Hu agreed. Yashikach Shashibarta. I thought if you are angry, then you lose Ruach HaKodesh. You can't... You can't receive ruah. You can't right. receive. Right. It's a mida raw. Right? The Rambam says kas mida raw, ad lemaol. You have to. But if sometimes if the, the, the Rabbeinu Yonah says it was a toelet, kan kas or shoshol ayel l'shem shemayim, she kavanat nachash levayish is klai yisrael achilu l'shem gadol, and in this case the anger brought out the Yeshua that they needed. 
So yes, in general, cost is not a good thing. But we see other, other examples, like when Moshe got angry, etc. cetera, and when they, they, they see there was a toilet, even a Kodesh Baruch Hu agreed. Vayikach tzemet bakar. So he took two oxen. Vayinat chayu, he cut them up into pieces. Vayishlach b'chol gvu Yisrael b'yad ha-malachim le'mor. He sent them to all of Klai Yisrael through messengers. Whoever doesn't follow me and Shmuel, this is what's going to happen to their cows. Now, who was the, when did we see previously that somebody cut somebody up? That was in, the, was that the Pilegish Begiba? That was the Pilegish Begiba. So here he used a similar, he didn't cut up, a per, he didn't cut up the, the person, but he did it in a way to galvanize Kla Yisrael. In, in, and again, in a way to remind them that this is the appropriate way to gather people. I have, I have a question about, um, Shaul was, um, um, was anointed by Shmuel but he and he didn't take the reins of the uh, of the nation immediately, and I think the same thing happened with David, that you know it was kept secret for a while. So I'm not sure why he's being so faulted for not assuming power. No, if you remember in last week's Perek, Shol wasn't accepted by the people yet. There were some people who followed him but there were many people who did not follow him. So this Perek, Hashem led, Hashem created this threat from Nachash, and now Shaul is going to dominate, and this is going to create the Malucha for Shaul. Mm -hmm. Now, what you're describing by David, David ruled as king in Hebron for seven and a half years before he became Melech Yisrael over the rest of the Shvatim. So it was 33 years, seven years in Hebron. He was 40 years king, seven years in Hebron, and 33 years in Kla Yisrael. So this is his clarion call to the nation by sending them the book. By the way, it was his own cows. And he was willing to spend money on his own. Now, the Musa Nevi'im also explains this, how we try to compare and contrast it to the Pelegish Begiva. In the Sefer Mikra Kodesh, this was Hoyroli Yisrael Loimar Shekamoshi after she had Ruach Haim Begufa Chai, Ki in Bishae Bar of Shleimi, Mumuhu Barim Zebaze. A living thing cannot be alive if you break it up into pieces. Uchishimanatkin Otam Lixarim Lo Yichebehem Ruach Haim. Life will not flow in an organism if it's divided up. Cain, Lo Tachul Ruach Vurav Chaya Am. Again, it was another simon to them that they have to unify. And therefore, Ish et Re'eu Yazru, he called Tsar Tsaral Achad Mevorian. Lokenimi Parduheim, if they remain separated like these pieces of Bokar. And that's why he said, whoever doesn't come to help Kla Yisrael, this is what's going to happen to their assets. Yeah, the Oynish will be Mida Kineged Mida. Posuk Ches. Vayif Kedem Bebezek. He counted them, all the Jewish people who rallied in Bezek. Bezek is a place. Radak says, Shem Mokum. Remember Adoni Bezek we had in Shoftim. However, the Gemara and Yuma have based on Rav Yitzchak. Also, Limnos is Yisrael, Afil Lidvar Mitzvah. 
You're not allowed to count people. For example, any, if you go to Minyan and you have to count 10, we don't say one, two, three, four. We say, Oshia et uva. We take a pasuk that has 10 words and we say, Oshia et and we count 10. And Chazal tell us that Shaul now, when he's marshalling his army, he needs a census. He had each person bring a, a, pot, a piece of pottery. That's shot in Bezek. And they counted the Charesim. And we're going to see later on, David Melech did a census and he counted the people. And a, a huge magefa, a plague occurred. And we'll have to see why David did that. But here, Shoal is following the regular halacha and he counted them not directly. Now, where do we, we saw that in the Torah when Moshe commanded them to give the machzitz shekel, the mm-hmm. same thing, they counted the machzitz shekel, and that's how they were able to do the census, which we see in Parshas Bamidbar, in Parshas Pinchas. So, look at this. 330,000 people he gathered, 30,000 from Yehuda alone. Now, the Musa Anavim has a very nice pshat. Das Rav Yitzchak, like we said, Bezek ein zes sheim makom, elish is shivrei chwas. Like we said, it's pieces of pottery. And each one gave a piece and we counted it. Later on, when Shaul is commanded to do battle against Amalek, it says there as well, betlaim. They, counted, they gave sheep. They counted the sheep. Each one gave it a sheep and then uh, they were able to count. Because there's a Isr Limnos as Isra Kolecha Vechad. Vahatam Masha Osir Lasois K. That's what I wanted to get to. Why, why is it prohibited for us to count individual Jews? Mevuar Besefer Yaroiz Dvash. It's from the Zoyar. In Malachim Beis, Elisha Novi is hosted by a very prominent woman called the Isha Shunamit. And he gives, she gives him a, a, a room with a kisei and a shulchan and a menorah. And whenever Elisha travels in this area, he stays by the Isha Shunamit. And he asked the Isha Shunamit, is there something I can do for you? Can I speak to the king on your behalf? Or to the Sartsava? What does she say? Betoch ami anochi yoshavet. I don't need anything. I, I, I'm in my, I'm with my people. Bezehu ki azayat Rosh Hashanah. The Gei Chazi Amar Lashonamit Efsha Sheyesh La Eze Bakosh LeMelech Malchi Amalachim. What was really meant there was, do you have a request from a Kodesh Baruch Hu? Vaaz Yitpalel Ba'avurai Elisha Anavi. And Elisha, like going to a Rebbe, would daven for him. The Alzei Shiva on this the Yishan Shonamit responded, B'toch Ami Anochi Yoshav. I don't need Elisha to daven for me. I'm with the people. Hainu. She ain't a she's palu bavurabi frat. She doesn't want somebody davening for her, specifically her. Kibizman shim vakshin ala prat. Bizem orina lav midas adin. All of a sudden, the attribute of din will say, well, okay, let's focus on this person. Okay, he did this good, but what, other, what bad things did he do? Eli is palu bavura and this is a general principle. We daven with the tzibur. Because when you daven with the tzibur, Hashem looks at the tzibur, not necessarily, at, and then therefore everybody in the tzibur is answered. That's why when we daven in Shmon Esrei, we daven not necessarily as Yechidim, but for, for that we should, be, we should get things as a group. 
כי זכות הכלל עדיפה מזכות הפרט. ולכן, כמו כן, אין רואי למנות את כל יחיד ויחיד מישראל בפרט. This is in fact the reason why we don't count individual Jews. משום שבזה נותנים חשיבות לכל אחד ואחד בפני עצמו. Each person is looked at as an individual. כי כל דבר שבמיניון דבר חשוב הוא, שאין הם הזבטה למה כלל. כמו שאמרו ברמון, יור הדיה. יש אוהב וכל דבר שבמיניון אין הוא בטל. מיניון, things that are sold in, as a count, like a dozen eggs, or anything that's, that's a דבר שבמיניון, is not בטל when it's mixed with other things. נמצא שעל ידי המניין, מוארין עליו את מידת הדין. So when, when you're counted individually, so again, that shows you as a specific person, as opposed to the Shunamit's concept of Anochi or Shavet with the Am. Umutav yoter lo kol echad vechad, lachzik et atzvo she'en bo shum chashivus, vekol chashivuto mevnei shu chelik ben haklau. People should, think, should, be, should want to be part of a group. Vlachen bechol makom she'yot trichin lunot Yisrael, hayu manim otom al yedei dvarim achirim. So very nice shot in why we don't count ourselves. So they have 330,000 people. Pasuk tes. He sent messengers back to the people of Yavesh Gilad and told them, By the time noontime comes around, you're already going to have a victory. The messengers came by Yagidu Lan Sheyavesh by Yitzvach and they were happy. By Yomru Lan Sheyavesh, Machar Neitzeh Aleichem, Vasitem Lanu Kecholato Benichem. So they told the messengers of Nachash, tomorrow we're going to come out to greet you. Pasuk Yudalot, Vahimi Macharat, Vayasem Sholat Ha'am Shlosha Roshim. Shol divided the, the army into three heads. They already had destroyed Amon by noontime. They were spread, scattered, so that there weren't even two people of Amon together. Yud Beis. Vayomer Ha'amel Shmuel. Mia Omer. So now the people obviously realize that Shaul is the anointed one. This is a tremendous, miraculous victory. And they recognize that Shmuel's anointing of Shaul is indeed the right thing. Who are these people that were Maranain about, that were complaining about Shaul? Who is he? We're not going to follow him. They, they, they had humiliated Shaul. Give them to us, we will put them to death. So this is where that thing comes in, where Melech HaMoichel B'Kvoidoi, it could be that maybe Shaul should have killed them because, and, and, and it's seen as a weakness of him as one of the reasons why eventually his Machus is taken. Or, as we saw, it's viewed as a positive. Because on a day that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave this great victory, uh, it's, it's not right to ruin it by killing other Jews. Let me just make sure. I don't want to... Yeah, that. Okay. Posuk Yudalad. Vayom HaShmuel HaLa'am. Shmuel said to the nation, L'chu v'nelcha ha-gilgal. Let's go to Gilgal and we will renew the kingdom there. That means we will, re, we will re, do it the proper way because last time that they did it, Shoal wasn't fully accepted. Now he's going to be fully accepted. And Gilgal is the place right where they had crossed uh, the yard day. And they had originally set up the Mishkan there and for 14 years, the Mishkan was in Gilgal. At that time, the Bamois were permitted. When the Mishkan was moved to Shiloh, so again, the Bamois were prohibited. Now we're back in a period of time where the Bamois are permitted. So they could offer Korbonis in Gilgal. The Mishkan, we know, was not there. 
the Mizbeach was in the city of Nov, Ira Kohanim, which we're going to know, we're going to see what happens to that in the future. But that's where the Mizbeach is. The Aron is still in the in in is still in the the, the field where we left it, where it's going to stay until Dovra Melech brings it to Yushalayim uh, after 20 years. But Gilgal was an auspicious place where they had gathered many times before, and they gathered them to re-dedicate Shoal in the Malucha. By the way, the Gemara, the, in, the, the Mishnah of Liezer says like this, Vayomer Shoal lo yumasa ish bayomazeh. The Torah recounts 12 excellent attributes of Shoal. Shlishis. He didn't stand on ceremony. That means when somebody insulted him, he didn't, he didn't carry a grudge. Shinamar. This posuk. Lo yumasish even though they had insulted him. So as I say, it's conflicting. Some Chazal pray Shaul, and some of the Chazals are concerned about the fact that he's Moichel al, al Kvod, and the Kvod of the Melech should not be. Now, what do you mean the Chadei Shama? The Radak points out, in Perik Yud, Miktzatam Bezu, Ba'amru Mayoshiyem, who is this guy that he's going to save us? Achshav Nisratzu Kulam. Now everybody wanted. Shoal is king. Because of this victory over Nachash. The Omar and the Omoid was in Gilgal when they first crossed. They gave a lot of cover to that place. Even though right? The Mizbech was in Nov, of course, this, this, the Aaron was not there. It's the separation, as we've said many times, of the Mizbech and the Aaron that allows the Bamas to be done. Posuk Tezva. Vayelchu kola ama Gilgal. Vayamluchu sham et Shaul ifne Hashem ba Gilgal. Oh yes, we, if you remember last week, we discussed the concept of consent of the governed. We brought John Locke. We discussed that, that, that the Meforshim, especially the Abarbanel, mentioned that it wasn't just that Hashem chose a king. The king had to be accepted by the people, the consent of the governed, that, that we the people, that it's the people that are part and parcel of the Melech becoming king, and without the people's consent, etc., et, et, et uh, it, it needs both. It needs the Bechir of Hashem, and it needs the consent of the people. So we point out that the political status, that, that, that which the, the, the political science people say, no, it was just John Locke, 1650, that first uh, the Hobbes and Leviathan said that a king we give up our rights to the king because everybody wants to cut everybody out, everybody's throat. Life is short, brutish, cold. That was Thomas Hobbes. That was about the time when they, Oliver Cromwell, and they cut off uh, King Charles's head. And they were trying to, res- they were saying, no, we need a king government. It was trying to explain government that we give up some of our rights to the king because otherwise our neighbor is going to slit our throat because the natural tendency of people is to be evil. So John Locke modified that. He said, we don't need the king. We need the consent. We should be able to get rid of a king if a king is, is, is despotic. But they all discussed this issue of the, of the, of the consent, consent of the governed. And I believe it's very, Barbanel sees very clearly in the fact that it was very important before Shoal was Nimlach that he had to be accepted by everybody. This concept exists even in Klai Yisrael. Very early on. And there was great happiness regarding this. (coughs) 
Next week, Perak Yud Beis is a pivotal Perak. It's, it's sort of Shmuel Anavi's swan song. He really gives Musr to Klai Yisrael regarding the fact that now they have a king, but that's really, again, we talked about many, in the last few weeks, it was also a yin and a yang. In, in some respects, they needed a king, but it was a timing issue. When they had Shmuel Anavi, they, they were so close to Hashem, they didn't need a king at that time. Later on, when they would, with, without a Navi of the caliber of Shmuel, they would need a king. But he chastises them. And that Perak is almost, and then we, and then sort of Shmuel drifts away as, as the key pr protagonist, not completely, but we, we will see how, how that works. Now, yeah, Ernie, you, you mentioned next week. Next week is Tisha yeah, Bob. Just no, a reminder. Yeah, I, I understand. So, so, we will we will generate a schedule. Um, I think Sunday night works best for this group, I, but there there are some times where the Sunday nights haven't worked. Now, Susie and I are flying to Israel, God willing, God willing for the bar mitzvah of our grandson. Oh, um, Mazel week, Tov. Yeah, Mazel yeah, the, week Mazel after, the week after Tisha B'av. So again, we'll have to figure out. We're going to do it from Israel. We'll have to figure out the timing. Uh, but but th th that day will also so we'll s Mario will send out a calendar of when we'll have the next year. What what works for most people? Would you we want to keep it Sunday nights? Correct. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. So we'll have a we'll have a few few weeks of hiatus like summer vacation, and then we'll pick it up and I'll let, we'll let Mario know to disperse it when we'll when we'll go back to Parakid Base. Does anybody have any other comments they'd like to make about this parak? Or about anything we said tonight, or or any anything like that. Nope. Okay, very Everybody good. Should good. Everybody day. should have a, a good week. Everybody okay. should have an easy fast next Sunday, and Thank have you. a good week. Thank you. Okay. Welcome to Howard and Gitti. Howard and yeah. Gitti, well, it's great to have you, and 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 uh, fantastic.